Welcome to This Week in High School Sports. I'm Teresa Whipple and hi Steve. Hi Teresa. We're still in football which we're going to talk about in a moment mm -hmm. which is actually really great news but first we have to thank our sponsor Red Onion Burgers and also let you know there's an event coming up on December 2nd and it is a fundraiser. I think we talked about this last week for the Shop for a Cop which Sean Richards from Red Onion always sponsors and it is to benefit kids who may not be able to afford to go shopping for their families. They connect them with first responders, mm -hmm. firefighters and police officers and take these children shopping and of course that takes money right. so Sean John does a fundraiser every year, and this year the one uh, that he's doing is called Sweets and Appetizers Wine Poll, oh. and it's going to be at, uh, forgive me for looking at my notes here, Emerald City Harley Davidson, which is uh, on 188th Street Southwest in Linwood, and they're going to have an event where you can uh, drink wine, eat gourmet cupcakes and raise money for this great cause. So I would tell you that if you are interested, there's lots of information online, including on the Red Onion Burgers website uh, and on Facebook, but uh, you can also call Sean Richards, and I will have this number up on the screen for you, but the number is 425-218-5996. So thanks again, Sean, for all you do for the community, and let's get to football. Absolutely. Uh, the Meadowdale Mavericks, they broke the curse. They finally made it to the semifinals of the state tournament. Uh, they'd been to the the, the quarterfinals five previous times and had lost all five of those games. However, this week they defeated Peninsula 34-29. This was a game in which Meadowdale jumped out to a 27-7 lead at halftime. They scored on their first five possessions of the game. Uh, a couple field goals by Will Schaefer, a couple touchdowns from uh, Drew Tinkstead throwing to Zach Plummer. Kella Marshall had a fumble recovery, and then he ended up scoring a couple plays later at the running back position. Great night for Meadowdale. Made it very interesting at the end, which this team tends to do during the yes, playoffs. Yes, they do. We've noticed that. Uh, they call them the heartbreak kids. Well, we're calling them the cardiac, cardiac kids, kids yeah. right? Not heartbreak kids. It's a whole other movie. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, call themselves kids. the Mavs mob. We call them the cardiac yeah, kids. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they had to kind of hold on a little bit at the end as Peninsula drove all the way to the Meadowdale 45-yard line with under a minute to go. And then finally turned it over on downs. But uh, Meadowdale gets the victory. They now set up with a, uh, a matchup on Saturday. 4 p.m. at Pop Keeney Stadium over in Bothell. They'll be taking on the top-ranked O'Day Fighting Irish. Uh, winner of that game goes to the state championship game. Loser is going to see their season come to an end. So we have, we decided to bring in a couple more players. And, and I'm told from these guys that we, we give too much attention to the skill positions, the, the quarterbacks and the running backs and the wide receivers. We haven't given enough love this year to the offensive line. We changed that this week. So we brought in Brendan Diaz and Bryce Chapman, the starting left tackle and left guard on the offensive side of things for the Mavericks. Had a fun conversation with them. We also made sure that uh, we returned some property of Meadowdale football back to its rightful owner. Uh, here's the interview we did with Brendan and Bryce. The Meadowdale Mavericks defeat Peninsula 34-29 in the quarterfinals of the state football tournament. And with that, for the first time in school history, they're heading to the semifinals. The curse has been broken, hashtag break the curse. <laughs> and with us right now, the two starters on the offensive left side of the line, Brendan Diaz, number 65, Bryce Chapman, number 64. Guys, congratulations on breaking the curse. Thank, Thank, you, so you. Much. Thank you so much. Uh, what does that mean for uh, for you guys as a as Meadowdale students, not only football players, but uh, members of the school? Uh, Brendan, what about you? Uh, if this is something you guys have kind of had on your radar all year, right? Right, yeah. All I can say pretty much is that just I know we're going to be leaving a mark. Uh, at Meadowdale, so when we leave, we'll, we'll be remembered for something. Yeah, and uh, Bryce, I mean, this is something that uh, previous players that have come before you have talked about also. it's This is a tight-knit alumni group. I'm sure that they've kind of reminded you that uh, you guys are trying to carry that tradition on to another level. Have you guys talked to some of the alums, or have they been around and been very vocal about it? Oh, definitely. After the game, we had some guys stay in the locker room with us. So it was like they were part of the team again. It's, a, it's awesome for us, but it's also awesome for them to keep the tradition going. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't an easy curse to break. It, it looked like it might be early on. You were ahead 27-7 to at halftime. You guys scored on, on the offensive side of things, your first five possessions. Brendan, did it feel like it was easy at that point? What was going on uh, in that first half? I mean, I don't want to say it was easy, but, I mean, there's definitely been harder battles we fought, and I guess that made me nervous going into the locker room, knowing that these guys weren't going to just give up. They were going to give us a fight in the second half. Mm -hmm. And Bryce, they gave you a pretty big battle in the second half. Almost came back, uh, had a chance to go ahead of you guys in the last minute of the game, but your defense finally held up and stopped them. 
Uh, the third, fourth quarter, was it a little frustrating? Uh, did they make some adjustments? What was going on out on the field? Uh, well, they did change their lineup uh, a little bit to something that we haven't seen, but we were kind of preparing for everything. And so it was frustrating that we couldn't get ourselves going, but our defense really stepped up, led by Quinton, you know, mm -hmm. the linebacker. And it was really it was frustrating when we got on the sideline, but watching our defense kind of, you know, step up for us, it really helped us elevate too. Sure. Now, uh, Brendan, I know I was given, getting a hard time from, uh, from you guys, I, through the coaching staff anyway. They were letting me know that... We, we tend to give a lot of attention to uh, to Drew Tingstead, your quarterback. And, <laughs> yeah, he's he's all league, rightfully so, right? Uh, Kellen and Deshaun, your running backs are, are outstanding. You've got a great receiving core with Halen and Will and and uh, Drew and all those other guys there, and uh, Zach Plumber, the mm -hmm. tight end. We don't give enough love to the line, right? Is this a we've been overlooking you guys all year? What's the deal? I mean, I I just feel like uh, you got to give credit where credits due. There you go. Uh, I mean, we're. We're working our butts out there and just uh, getting little shout outs here and there is nice, but uh, having this, this is this is good. This is what we should have been doing all along then, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and Bryce, what does it mean for you guys? Because this is a, a team that was picked to finish fourth in the division, according to the coaches' poll. And I think a lot of the, um, the hesitation for people to put you guys up higher was that there were question marks, how was the offensive line going to perform this year? Were they going to come together? And I'm sure you guys took a lot of uh, pride in knowing that, uh, hey, we, we want to be a, a strong link in this whole thing, too. Uh, what's it meant for you guys all year to, to have the success? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we got a new offensive line coach, uh, James Harmon, Coach Harmon, and he really turned us around. He, uh, With him, you know, we were able to actually really step it up. We were able to perform better than I think any of us expected to. Mm -hmm. And so being what we thought at the beginning, the weak link, to be able to actually perform and get Kella and Deshaun and everyone going, it's a really big honor. Definitely. Now, uh, last week... Uh, we, we talked about this with Drew and Halen. Uh, one of the biggest plays, if not the biggest play in Meadowdale history, fourth and 19, right? <laughs> Under a minute to go. You're down to your final play of the year. You guys needed 19 yards to keep the season going. You get a 48-yard touchdown. Drew Tinkstead was in studio last week, and he <laughs> gave a nice shout-out to you, Brendan. You uh, you apparently kind of saved his behind with a, a block from your own behind, right? I Tell did. me about that. Yeah, okay, so the play was, I believe it was a... Uh pass play so we uh, I was locked up on my guy and I was just blocking and I see big number 77 was coming towards me coming right down and I didn't want to give this guy away because if he got through then Drew was getting sacked and if this guy got through then Drew was getting sacked so I had to block both of these guys so I just did what I could and threw my body out there and uh I ended up pancaking the kid with my uh, with my butt. Okay, I hit. But do what you got to do sometimes as a lineman, yeah, right? You guys have to yeah, get no. kind of dirty in the trenches there, and and, and that's uh, Bryce. That's the thing we don't realize, right? You guys don't get the glory of the touchdowns. You uh, sometimes you just have to kind of do what's needed. Definitely, yeah. yeah. We have to do a few things that you know some people don't see, but when we when we when we score, you know, it makes it all worth it. So yeah, everything we can do that helps. You, know, you guys play a big game on Saturday. We just found out four o'clock, Pop Keeney Stadium over in Bothell. Yep. You're playing the uh, top-ranked team in the state, O'Day. Winner goes to the state championship game. Uh, wh what does that mean? I mean, Brandon, have you had a chance to look at O'Day yet? I know it's early in the week, but uh, you'll see plenty of film coming up. Have you have you looked at these guys at all yet? Nah, I've seen a couple of plays, and it's it's going to be a war on mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Bryce, these guys probably don't have too many weaknesses, do they? Uh, no, I was watching a little bit of film yesterday because I got anxious. And they're a big team, and they're well-coached, and they're rightfully so the best team. But, you know, we've been, the whole season, we've been the underdog. So we're going into it again, and I think we can take the challenge. Sure. I'm excited. Now, uh, playing in the semifinals means you have to play after Thanksgiving. It's a it's a Saturday game this week. Uh, what does Thursday like? Are you, are you guys practicing this week? Uh, yes. Yes, we will be. So you'll, you're practicing on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. And then I understand uh, the Chapmans might be hosting a, a special guest on Thursday for Thanksgiving dinner. Tell me about who's coming over. Oh, definitely. Uh, at the household, uh, Brendan's family is leaving him so we're bringing him over and we're gonna have a nice little feast with him in the house so uh so you're you're heading over to the chapman's to have some I am. have some food yeah you, you guys are pretty big guys so um, I, I don't know i'm sure the skilled guys the, the receivers and the running backs they have to kind of watch what they eat for thanksgiving dinner this year <laughs> knowing they're playing a football game in about 36 hours or almost 48 mm -hmm. hours right. uh, what about linemen do you guys have to kind of watch how much uh, mashed potatoes you, you consume or watch your, your pumpkin pie what's uh what's What's the Chapman feast going to be like? Are you guys are you guys ready for Brendan? Oh, I, I think so. I mean, we weren't at first, but we're preparing now, we're starting now actually. Uh -huh. And uh, we're you know we don't really have to watch what we're going to eat. You know, we're not going to kill ourselves or anything, but we're gonna we're gonna have a fun time. Okay. And I think Brendan's going to have a good time too. Oh yeah. You, you ready to, uh, to hang out at the Chapmans and uh, have some some turkey? Very much so. Yes. Okay. So here they come, Mom and Dad Chapman. So we'll <laughs> see. Hey. Um, Injuries on the offensive line last week. Uh, I know Tom Cheney, your, your center, went down. Uh, Levi was out with a, 
a concussion injury. What does it mean for you guys to perform when, when some of your, your key players around you go down? Obviously, the left side was pretty solid all night. You stayed, stayed intact. The center and the right side, though, uh, just next man up mentality. What's it, what's it like out there for, for you guys when one of your fellow comrades goes down on the line? Brendan, I'll ask you. It's, uh, it's Band of Brothers, man. We, uh, we, if a new guy comes up, uh, we're going to help him. He's going to become one of us, and we're just going to fight through it together no matter what. So we gave Tom and Levi Kowalski a nice little shout-out. Who else on the line should we be uh, give, giving a look at this week when, uh, when folks are going to the game on Saturday? Well, uh, we have a sophomore right tackle. His name is Alex Maxwell, and he has been playing outstanding. All you know, league, yeah. He's an yeah. all league guy, both sides of the ball. You know, He has a really bright future, and hopefully he'll be going places afterwards. And he's one of the hardest workers on the team, and everybody sees it. Mm -hmm. And Eric Lee, our right guard, is also a really productive player. He plays really well, and uh, not, he doesn't get a lot of love, but you know, not a lot of linemen do, but he deserves it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're, when Tom went down, who stepped in for him? Uh, Jared Music. He's a small little guy, but we have the mentality that everybody on the field on our side of the ball is the best player. So when he stepped up, he did his job perfectly. Snaps were good, and he blocked it well. And you want to know what? We won the game with him. So. You, you did. So we'll see if we can win another game with him. Uh, possibly. We hope that Ch Tom's back if he, if he can make it. Uh, don't want to look too far ahead because right now it's, it's about the semis and hopefully the state uh, championship yeah. game. But mm -hmm. while I got you both in studio... Uh, any thoughts to uh, college next year? What's what's going on for you guys, uh, Brendan? Maybe I'll, I'll ask you first. What are you looking to maybe study in the future? And I'm I'm trying to get into uh, film and video production. Okay. And uh, I'm so we might have you talked to Teresa and Eric before you leave. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm thinking about going to either uh, Wazoo or uh, Eastern. Okay. Yeah. And Bryce, what about you? What are your future aspirations? I love sports so much, but I've been playing football for 13 years in a row, so this might be my last year off, but I want to stay in it. So I want to do like a sports management thing or something mm -hmm. like that. Wazoo has a nice program and whatnot, so I just want to stay in the world, you know, with the business side of it this time. So we will see. So, uh, yeah, again, big game coming up. And before I let you guys leave, uh, on the Sound Live Sports Network, where we broadcast a lot of the Meadowdale games, we always have our player of the game afterwards. Uh, I know we've, we've been a little bit uh, forgetful of the linemen. We don't always get you guys up there, but... Your skill guys, they, they do a nice job with the interviews. However, afterwards, they tend to leave souvenirs behind. Uh, hmm. About a month ago, we had Drew Tinkstead up there try to leave his helmet with us. We, we did give it back to him. Uh, on Friday night, uh, Zach Plummer was our player of the game. He had two touchdowns and over 100 yards receiving. Left his mouthpiece and uh, like said he needs it back. And I, I didn't want to touch it, so I put it in a plastic baggie. Uh, said he needs this for the O'Day game, so I'm going to go ahead and trust uh, one of you guys with it. Who's who's the most uh, trustworthy here? He's driving. So, uh, Zach, if you're watching it, I know you will be. Uh, Bryce has got the mouthpiece, so make sure you get that in. Make sure he cleans it first, too, before he uses it. But uh, he's going to need that for O'Day, and we're hoping he's going to need it the week after. Uh, by the way, Cam Kamayakin and Eastside Catholic will be playing in that other game to, to determine the state championship matchups. That game is also at Pop Keeney before your game at 1 o'clock, so folks can get out on Saturday. Get over to Bothell, watch Kamiakin versus Eastside Catholic, 4 o'clock, O'Day versus Meadowdale, and we'll see who's going to play in the state championship game. Bryce Chapman, thank you very much for thank coming you. in. Brendan Diaz, thank you. Thank you. Uh, keep an eye on the left side of the line if you're at the game on Saturday. Watch these two guys, and hopefully we'll be watching a Meadowdale Maverick victory. I'll have to make sure to get Brendan into the video studio and see if we can get him signed up for an internship or something. That's great. No, I think that would be a fantastic opportunity for him. A hardworking guy, too. We know yeah. that. We've seen him on the football field. I'm yeah. sure he's going to do just as well when he's doing production work for, uh, for whoever he works for. Yeah. And now we're starting to talk about basketball season, and you have some guests for that, too. We do. As, uh, as the fall comes to a conclusion here, we're starting to look towards the winter sports, and we brought in a couple of coaches in the area not only to talk about basketball, but really to talk about events that are coming up this week. That's the primary reason we wanted to have them in here. We had Naylan Sood from Mount Lake Terrace and Roger O'Neill from Meadowdale, both coaching at their alma mater, both head boys basketball coaches. We talked to them about events coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday night of this week. Here are those interviews. With fall sports coming to a conclusion, we're starting to focus our attention towards the winter. And with us right now, two of the head boys basketball coaches from the Edmonds School District, Naylan Sood, the head basketball coach for the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks, and Coach Roger O'Neill from the Meadowdale Mavericks. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in today. Uh, short week of Thanksgiving coming up, but uh, a week in which both of you have huge events coming up to kick off your season. Naylan, we're going to start with you. Jam session, jam session 23, yeah. 23rd annual, uh, coming up on Tuesday night at Mount Lake Terrace High School. Tell us a little bit about the event and the, the origins of the event. Well, 23, it's, it's showing my age. It's making me re realize how old I'm getting. But, uh, yeah, uh, Vince DeMero, which a lot of you know, runs a journalism program at Mount Lake Terrace High School. 
uh, 23 years ago. On a weekend, he decided to go over to Pullman to watch their Midnight Madness with his Cougar ties. We know who he'll be rooting for this week. And uh, mm -hmm. I went down to the University of Washington and in October to, uh, of that year to watch the University of Washington's Midnight Madness. And uh, we both came back. We were just talking over the week, uh, what we did for the weekend and shared that we went and saw the Midnight Madnesses. And uh, Vince and I thought, well, we dreamt it up. Let's try it at Mount Lake Terrace High School. And because of our ASB and district rules, we can't do it at midnight, mm -hmm. but we uh, bumped it up earlier in the day, and we started at uh, 5.30 in the afternoon, and it's a tremendous kickoff for our winter sports season for the girls' basketball program. They have a scrimmage. Our boys' program has a scrimmage. And then two years ago, we decided to bring our alumni back, and so we have anywhere between 20, 25 alumni come back, and they have a scrimmage, and uh, it just ends up being a great, great event for our student body, for our community. Uh, we bring in our other winter sports, they get introduced, our band comes in, our dance drill team comes in, our cheerleaders get to go out there and perform, and, and then we bring in young kids from the community and they get to have competitions and skits, and uh, we, it's, just, it's just a great event for the entire uh, uh, community and Mount Lake Terrace High School. Uh, DJ as well, so there's always music going on in the background and everything else, it's a, it's a lot of fun all around. Uh, you also use it as a fundraiser, I know if you, uh, if you come without food, it's five dollars, if you come with $3, that's, a, that's kind of a key element to this too, and giving back to the community. Yeah, as you said, Steve, $3 with canned food, $5 without, and then that ties into our upcoming game and the week leading into the event with our PPP against Linwood High School, which we do an entire Mount Lake Terrace High School canned food drive. And so we tie that in to that, so we bring in a lot of canned food from not only our PPP week, but the jam session, and then that goes out to the community. And so uh, it's just a, it's a it's a win win all the way around, and it's a, it's a, a highlight of the year for Mount Lake Terrace High School and uh, for our boys and girls basketball programs. I should point out the the alumni game really an outstanding game with so much tradition and history, and so many players who have played college basketball uh, from Mount Lake Terrace. It's that's a top notch game. Are you going to be playing this year, by the way? Coach? No, no, no. I did the student versus staff game last year in May. I'm still recovering from that, and so I won't be doing this one. But uh, when I watch that game, it dawns on me, oh, yeah, now I understand why we had some success. So a lot of great players, great individuals, and seeing them come back in their late 20s, 30s, uh, even a couple guys in their 40s, mm -hmm. and seeing the successes they're having in life, uh, it reminds you of why we do what we do. Yeah, interesting host for that event, too. I don't know, maybe you guys need to work on upgrading that one, but uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll continue to try to do my best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Roger O'Neill. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the Wesco Alumni Tournament that's taking place uh, Wednesday night over at Meadowdale High School. Uh, this is an event that's been going on for a few years with a, a few uh, few different tweaks along the way. Tell us about that event and what's going on. Yeah, this is our fifth year doing this event, and uh, excuse me, first week of coaching, you get a little sick sometimes. You'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get used to it. Uh, fifth year doing this event, and the first couple of years it was just a Me Meadowdale only event, and. Uh, it's really cool to see all the alumni come back and bring all the friends back in the gym as well. And um, similar to what uh, Malik Terrace has going on, you know, it's a uh, you know, you're almost using basketball as an excuse to bring the community back together. And so, um, really fun event. The last couple of years, we started incorporating other schools as well. Mm -hmm. And so we have a full-on uh, alumni tournament now. Um, and so this year we have we have nine teams total. Excuse me, ten teams total. So we'll have four Meadowdale teams. Um, a Linwood team, an Edmonds Woodway team, a Malik Terrace team, an Arlington team, uh, Cascade, and Shorewood. And so it'll be really fun to get all those guys back in the gym and uh, from all different eras and come back and throw a jersey on and play with their old high school buddies again. So, so we're using referees and the whole the yeah. scoreboard, everything? Is yeah, we got an announcer uh, in the main gym. We use both the main and the auxiliary gym. We got an announcer, we got officials. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So if you're uh, you're needing a basketball fix, Tuesday night over at Mount Lake Terrace High School, Wednesday night go to Meadowdale High School and uh, watch a lot of good basketball, a lot of uh, a lot of names you might recognize from the past in both cases. So should be fun nights over there for both. Um, hey, while I got you here, got to talk a little bit about the 2016-2017 teams also. Uh, season's right around the corner. Nalen, we'll start with you. Uh, you uh, you came oh so close last year to getting back to the Tacoma Dome and that yep. loss against Bellevue. Uh, how are we looking this year? Well, uh, I think Roger will speak about also I like our team. Uh, at this time of the year, you're trying to see what kind of team you can become. Uh, we have a, a few more of our kids out there right now. Roger's still waiting on a few. And uh, wishing Meadowdale's football team a lot of success in the postseason in their semifinal game. But uh, I, I like our basketball team. Uh, as I look at it right now, uh, we're, we're, 
what our what our weaknesses are. I also see as our strengths and vice versa. And so uh, uh, it's a, it's a good team. They work hard. Uh, uh, we we've got uh, uh, some pieces there that I, I'm, I'm hoping for a good season. Obviously, and uh, good character kids. You show up every day and you're motivated to work with the guys you have because of what they're putting into it. So between our varsity, our JV, and our C team, uh, you know, the kids that show up every single day are, are competing and, and love the game of basketball, and that, that's all you can ask for as a coach. Sure. Roger, uh, you're number two now at the helm, right? You, uh, you were there for a few years prior to that as an assistant coach. How are the, how are the Mavs looking right now? I know you guys uh, made, it, made, it in, made it into districts last year and had a decent little run, but uh, hopefully... Looking to get a little further this year, right? Yeah, we. Uh, it's been a. It's been a great week one. Um, we're we're missing a couple of guys due to the uh, football team uh, continues to win, uh, but we're really excited for them, and that's a great problem to have, right? So uh, we hope that that happens every year, and so we're uh, we're getting in the gym every day with the guys we have and getting better, um, and being able to focus on a lot more uh, on a lot more fundamental work and and that kind of thing. So we're really excited about the group we have this year, the guys we have right now, and. Certainly, some of the guys will get here in a couple of weeks after the uh, football team wins their first state championship. Nice. And so, uh, no, we're we're fired up. And so, last year we we came one game short of the district tournament. Actually, we we lost in that uh, the playing, playing game, game right? That's to, right. Yeah. To Shorewood, and and certainly, yeah, we're looking to get back in in the postseason and and make some noise there. But we have a we have a lot of things to to get done before that. But we like like Coach Sud said here, really high character kids in our program right now that want to be coached, that want to learn, that want to work hard, and so. Uh, we're fired up to see what we can do here in the next couple months. They call it a play-in game. I consider it to be postseason. So I, in my mind, you made it to districts last year, but we'll see how they do this year. Uh, you kind of segued my next question. I'm looking at your schedule here right now. Uh, a couple of early games against Kingston and Jackson, uh, non-conference home games. When these players now, the football players who need to still get their required minimum amount of practices in, come back, right. they might miss a game like this. What's uh, what's the schedule looking like right now? Is there a chance that these games could be moved? Yeah, right now we're preparing as though we're playing those games, and, and we expect to be ready to, to play those games. But um, it's not uncommon when this kind of thing happens to try to push those back. So we're in the process of, uh, of talk, talking to those schools and seeing if there's dates that work for both of us later in the year that we could reschedule. Um, if it doesn't work out, we'll be ready to play them. But um, on the other hand, uh, more so than just perhaps a non-conference game not going your way or anything like that, it's it's the the seniors that are that are playing football that are going to come join basketball. You don't want them to miss out on any chances to play hoops. So. No, very fair. So again, those two games right now scheduled for Tuesday, November 29th, and Friday, December 2nd, both would be home games. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Naylan, we're looking at your schedule here right now. You uh, you start off with a couple of road games on uh, Tuesday the 29th and Wednesday the 30th. Two teams that had uh, pretty good seasons last year, West Seattle and Kamiak. Yeah, and if we didn't have those games scheduled, we'd try to reschedule to play Meadowdale when those <laughs> guys are out. I'm just telling you, that's why I'm talking to my AD. But, yeah, um, and that's sort of our philosophy. We wanted to always have a tough non-league schedule. Uh, I think a lot of programs have that, but you can see right away West Seattle had a tremendous year in Kamiak. They've got... A great program and good kids coming back. So, you know, uh, I don't think you look at it in the out of the lens of whether we're 2A or 3A. We just want to go play good basketball teams and get us ready for the league season because I know what a headache that's going to be with the quality of teams that we have in our, our, th our league with the thir 13 teams that are there. Uh, and so we're just, uh, we've got a tough non league all the way throughout the season. Uh, and so we'll, uh, same model we've used in the past, and uh, hopefully it pays off for us this year again. Oh, definitely. And uh, looking ahead at the schedule this year and at the season as a whole, uh, Wesco 3A was divided up into two divisions last year. Apparently the coaches, it sounds to me, all got together and decided to take a vote. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here, and that's how this came about. We're now down to a one league, one division all across the board league situation, which I guess is good in some ways for, for playoff seedings and that you truly get the – the top teams kind of seated where they should be. I guess the flip side of that is that you get to play your teams out of your own area a little less. You're not playing them twice now every year. You're only playing every team once going through the entire schedule. Uh, Naylan, maybe I'll have you speak to that first. What does that mean for you guys? Well, i got to give credit to my colleague here uh, that Roger was the one that really spoke to that at our end of the season meeting that he, want, he thought it would be good for a 13-team league. So you really find out in the postseason who the best teams are. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the North versus the South, and maybe the South was better. And it can change from year to year. But uh, the way it is now, we're going to find out who the best teams are 
to get to the postseason <coughs> out of thirteen, t out of twelve teams, because we'll obviously go to the two way. Mm -hmm. And so Roger could probably speak about it more because we're going to play this twelve team uh, uh, schedule, and we play everybody once. I'm uh, of the belief I used to like to play people twice. You get done playing them one time, you make your adjustments, you try to figure them out a little bit better, and be sec uh, playing the second time around. And you know, if you beat them, you're going to go to their gym, <laughs> as Roger knows, on a, on, a, on a Friday night in a packed gym, and they want to get you, and it's a great atmosphere. But there's pros and cons both ways. But uh, for the 12 3A teams, you're going to really find out who the best eight are, and then they get to go play off to see who's going to go to the next round after that. And we'll go see what the 2A is like, but I'm not looking forward to that right now because that's going to be pretty brutal. Sure. Now, uh, Roger, I'll ask you kind of the same question. Sure. You, you basically you're subbing out maybe a, a game, an extra game against an Edmonds Woodaway or a Metlake Terrace for a trip up to Oak Harbor or somewhere along those lines. Adding adding a little extra travel and maybe cutting out some of the traditional home and home games with these teams, uh, is it worth it in the end? I mean, is this uh, what's what's the benefit for you guys? Yeah, and we do play Oak Harbor on a Monday night in Oak Harbor. In Oak Harbor, year, so, you, so you know right off um, the bat. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh kind of kind of my thought on that was uh, look if we're going to be competing for the same spots in the postseason between the North and the South, and let's play each other in games that count for our conference standings mm -hmm. over the course of the year. Because what what tended to happen in the past was you play the South teams twice, and then you fill your non leagues up with teams from the North. And uh, those games don't count, and yet, the, you know, those teams might sneak in the playoffs, or if you had beaten them, or we might have snuck in the playoffs, and they had beaten us. So it seemed to me, why not play each other and put something on the line for it? So um, there is certainly the con that you don't um, perhaps get to play everyone twice. And I'm with coach. I like, I like looking at one game and, and then trying to see you gauge yourself the next time you play them. How much better have we gotten? You know, mm -hmm. can we can we prepare better this time? Um, but on the flip side. Uh, you get one shot at everybody, so you better be ready every night right, right. to go compete. Um, and so I'm excited to go up to some of those some of those schools in the north, like Stanwood and Marysville Pilchuck, places that our guys haven't really seen in a while, and uh, going into some, some hostile environments and having to play. So, um, yeah, when it comes down to that six and seven spots, depending on what happens up north with Squalicum and Ferndale, um, I think this is the best way to decide who, who deserves those spots. Definitely. Hey, uh, before I let you guys go, also want to talk a little bit about the traditions of your schools. Uh, kind of a unique situation in that both of you are coaching at your alma maters. Both of you are now, as of last month, teaching at your alma maters. As Roger, you just uh, joined the staff over there at Meadowdale. And not only that, but you're both such historians of your programs. I know, uh, Roger, you've put in extensive work uh, compiling stats from back, way back into the 60s, right? And in terms of the history of the program at Meadowdale and Nalen, you have a picture of the 1977 state championship Metlake Terrace basketball team on the wall in your classroom. What does it mean for you guys to be going down this path right now and kind of taking this journey with your schools? Uh, and maybe Nalen, I'll start with you since you've uh, you've been at it the longest. You're, you're you got Roger beat by a few years here, <laughs> <laughs> just a few. Yeah. Uh, what does it meant for you uh, when you start to kind of reflect and look back on what the, what this has been all about? Well, uh, when I talk to the kids about what Terrace basketball is and being a part of the program. Uh, it's there's a, a, I'm honest about it. I live my life by it. It's who I am. Uh, I was an eight-year-old kid that put that picture up of the 1977 team on my wall, and I said I want to have some little impact in terrorist basketball someday. And so it's very authentic that I can tell the kids I hope you feel the same way about it. And uh, I think you're you're so vested in it because you were a part of it as a, as a young kid growing up, wanting to be a part of it. Then you actually played in it, and now to sort of, in some ways, with your co-coaches, carry the torch for the program. Uh, it's, it's it's a real special thing, and to see what Roger's doing, and think back when I started. Uh, I, I always say this about what he's doing. Someone would say he's a great young coach. He's not a great young coach. He's just a great coach. But he's so vested in the Meadowdale program, and now being at the school, uh, I, I feel exactly what he he's feeling in terms of. Uh, it's not a uh, three-hour day job. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year because it's in, been such a part of our life. I was told one time, don't make terrorist basketball your life because there's other things that go on. But when you wake up and go to bed, you're thinking about it. And, and it's a real special thing. And uh, uh, I'm just fortunate that I've been able to be a part of it for so many years now. But I'm just carrying the torch now after Coach Blevins and Coach Otmar and what they did there and uh, and it's still about our kids <coughs> and, and what they do and it's it's their program 
and how far they want to take it. But uh, to be a small part of it still is, is, is a real special thing. Sure. Roger, now what about you? Again, you are <coughs> fairly new to the, the coaching scene there as far as being the head coach, but obviously you've been tied into this program for years, haven't been a player, uh, had family go through the school also. Uh, what does it mean for you now to be at your alma mater and to be the head coach? All right, yeah, a lot of a lot of similarities to what uh, Coach Sue just spoke on there. You know, I grew up in, in the gym uh, watching, watching my sisters play there, and since I was five years old, I'd been in that gym, and you know, I kind of grew up uh, dreaming of playing Mandel basketball, and when I finally got that opportunity, it was it was a dream come true, and we happened to have some really good teams at that time, and um, and then you know I'd go off to college for four years, and then I came right back and started coaching at the JV level, and uh, two years there, and now I'm taking over the program. It's just been a blessing and a dream come true. So um, yeah, a lot of the sentiments that Coach just spoke on ring true for me, and that it's a, it's just a huge honor to be. Um, hopefully influential in the direction of Meadow basketball and uh, and to have a hand in that still um, has just uh, been a ton of fun and it's a it's a responsibility that you know we don't take lightly and um, so yeah it's uh, to, to still be a part of it um, looking back after you know I remember painting my face and dressing up in a blue wig at state tournament games back when I was a little kid mm -hmm. and now and now to uh, to be able to put on a shirt and tie and coach on Friday nights is just uh, a ton of fun. So. Absolutely. We should also mention too, uh, speaking of the family environment and just the tie-ins to the, the community and, and where your families have come from here, we've had Vince DeMiro as the <coughs> public address announcer for Mount Lake Terrace basketball for many, many years mm -hmm. now, I think in 20-something years. You guys get a new public address announcer this year? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, so actually for, for a long time, about 17 years I think, my, my uncle had done the, the PA announcing for both the boys and the girls programs. Um, he did a terrific job and is really talented in that regard. And then uh, last year, my first year, uh, my friend, my friend NASA, who uh, works for the Seahawks Radio Network, did that for a year, and he did a tremendous job. But uh, he's just getting too tied up in his in his work, which is awesome. So now I have my dad actually stepping in to to start a, his first year as our PA announcer. So I know he's excited, and, and I'm excited to to have him there in that capacity as well. So if the public address announcer messes up at all during the games <coughs> while you're kind of walking up in front of the scoreboard, you can just lean over and yep. give Dad an earful, huh? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> so that should be fun, yeah. Is there rules about PA announcers giving tips or thoughts during the game to the head coach? I, I think because I'm going to keep an eye on that if there is. It might it might change a little bit when it's father son. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out this year. The, the funny part on that is what you don't know is he's having that job. I gave him that job so he can't give me tips. Okay. <laughs> Very smart moves. So very well done. Wise beyond his years. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's, he's learned well, right? He has. Hey, uh, fun talking to both of you guys. It's uh, been a, a privilege to get to know you both. We've had both of these guys as our as color commentators for some of our sporting events, too. And Roger, you've been doing some of the football games with yeah. us, and it's been a lot of fun watching the uh, the football team uh, do their thing this year. And, Nalan, I've had you jump on with us for mm -hmm. a few uh, state basketball games. These guys are pretty good announcers, too, so... Uh, we're going to try to keep them in the coaching world for a while. I think they, uh, they do very well there. Hey, Nail and Sued, thank you very much. Thank Best you. of luck to you this season. Appreciate Roger it. O'Neill, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Continue to watch the, uh, the Mavericks and the Hawks all season long. Well, some great ways for people to get their basketball fixes if they're looking forward to that this week, some events to attend. Yeah, those are a lot of fun, too. Uh, the Tuesday event I actually get to host. I've been doing that for a few years now, so I'm excited for Jam Session and what Roger's doing over there at Meadowdale as far as that alumni tournament is concerned. A lot of fun, so we certainly encourage folks to get out there to watch that and then uh, enjoy the rest of their week, too. It's, it's Thanksgiving on Thursday, yeah. Apple Cup Friday, yeah. Saturday night, football over at Pop Keeney, Meadowdale versus O'Day. And then, well, we're hoping then Meadowdale can focus on a state championship football game. If not, then we'll really start focusing our attention to winter sports as we've got boys and girls basketball, wrestling, boys swimming, uh, a lot more coming up here throughout the, uh, the course of late 2016 into 2017. Right, and we will have all the updates for you next week. So thanks for joining us and enjoy your Thanksgiving.